I'm Pete Kirby, and you're listening to Travel Fuels Life. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Travel Fuels Life, the show where we share stories, tips, and inspiration to help you live a travel lifestyle. I am your sound effect master host, Drew Hannish, and that was my weak and feeble attempt at a baseball sound effect, but, uh, you know, baseball's always been a huge part of my life, and with the spring comes all of that joy and excitement for the season to come. No matter how bad my Detroit Tigers are, I always have to, you know, get pumped up a little bit for the season. So, a couple of years ago, gosh, man, it was more than a couple of years ago, quite a few years ago, my friend Pete Kirby and I took off for an East Coast baseball trip, and we went to a bunch of different ballparks, and I wanted to sit down with him and have a chance to recall some of our memories from that very, very memorable trip. So we're going to talk a little bit about our baseball game experiences. We'll talk about how we planned it. And we'll also talk about some of the extra things we did, like going to Pat Steaks in Philly, the oldest beer pub in New York City, and watching the uh, premiere of Batman Dark Knight Rising in one of the oddest movie theaters I think I've ever been to. So the timing is perfect for this talk. I was just heading on down to Florida for spring training, and there's Pete's house on the way down. So I said, hmm, all right. So... I'm going to warn you about this episode. The first few minutes, we spend some time talking a little baseball shop, and it's really hard for me not to do that when the subject of the Atlanta Braves and Bobby Cox come up, (laughs) so forgive me. But from Pete's home, down there near Atlanta, Georgia, at 1130 at night, mind you, we had a couple of margaritas in us. Let's listen in to Pete and I talk baseball road trips. So I'm going to take us way back. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off all the way back in our radio days. And so you and I first met at Kiss FM WWNC in Asheville, North Carolina. That is correct. Now, my first recollection of knowing you was a baseball memory, which was we were in the newsroom, I think, and... The Braves and the Twins were playing each other in the World Series. That's right. And I seem to recall that a certain home run was hit that particular night by Kirby Puckett, which was memorable, but probably not in a good way for you. Probably not, because, of course, I I was pulling for the Braves. uh, And what was, uh, you know, aggravating about that series in general, and I always talk about this to this day, the Braves should have won that series, and they should have won it in Game 6. Mm-hmm. And this is the most aggravating thing for me. Chuck Knobloch faked a throw to second base. Lonnie Smith was running from first base, uh, um, and he would have scored on a hit to the— I can't remember who the hitter was at the time, but there was a hit uh, to the outfield. He was running from first base. He would have scored— but Chuck Knobloch faked a throw to the shortstop at second base. Lonnie Smith thought the ball was in Chuck Knobloch's hands, but it wasn't. So he held up, and mm-hmm. he didn't score. They went on to lose that game, and they went on to lose game seven. And see, I, it's funny because I have a completely different recollection of that. That was the game where I decided I was no longer going to root for the <laughs> Atlanta Braves. And my reasoning for that was that it, Bobby Cox, as a manager, always seemed to have a formula, and he would follow that formula no matter what was happening. And if the pitcher who was in at the time looked like he was unsteady, and it was Charlie Lee Brandt. Yeah. No, I, I remember you. You went. <laughs> you went on a tear about Lee Brandt. I right. do remember that. Right. That's right. I'm like, take him out. What do you can see? He's laboring. And what's funny is that a year later, when the Phillies were in the World Series, they had the exact same thing happen to them. Everybody blames Mitch Williams for the home run that, you know, Joe Carter hits the home run and the series is over. 
I go back earlier than that when I say in the previous game, when the Phillies had a huge lead and Jim Fergosi is the manager for the Phillies was like, I'm not taking Larry Anderson out. He's He's my guy in the eighth inning, and that's what's going to happen. And you could see the guy was sweating bullets, and he was uncomfortable as could be. And Fergosi wasn't going to take him out. And Toronto came back in that game. There wouldn't have been a need for the Mitch Williams home run because the series was going in the right direction for the Phillies. But a certain manager said, I'm sticking with my plan. So for me, that was it for, for Bobby Cox. So I would draw the same parallel, though. If there would have been no, if, if Lonnie Smith had a scored, mm-hmm. there would have been no need to take Lieberman out of the game. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll agree to disagree. I don't know. Whatever. But it's funny because my first memory of you is a baseball memory. So it seemed to me like the perfect person to talk about uh, baseball uh, on the podcast would be you. And then somehow we ended up doing a baseball trip years later. Yeah, like many things that you and I do, we talk about, and then 20 years later, we actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> Although what's funny is, I was trying to recall, how did we end up deciding to go on the baseball trip that we did? And it was a year earlier in 2011 that I was on a baseball trip through the Midwest, And you called me while I was driving through Chicago and I was at the end of my trip and I was talking about where I was going and and what I was doing. And you're like, we should do a baseball trip. Yeah. I think the idea, uh, you know, me, like many other baseball fans have always had the dream of doing uh, a tour to all the stadiums. You know, you want to go see a game at every stadium. You want to do it one season. You know, you do it during the summer. That'd Mm -hmm. be great. Uh, obviously, that's not practical for most of us. But, uh, you know, when I was talking to you and you were on this baseball, he said, you know what, instead of having, you know, the, I'm never going to do a, you know, unless I win the lottery, I'm never going to do a whole stadium tour. But it'd be fun to do a regional tour. And you were doing one of the, the Midwest. And um, I'm a huge fan of the Northeast. I, I love New England. I've spent a lot of time up there. Um, and uh, I, I just thought that, I, that since you like doing it, I would love to do it. It'd be a fun thing to do, and it'd be a fun thing to do in the Northeast. So pack the bags and figure out the logistics and make it happen. Yeah, and from what I remember, and maybe you can correct me on this, it seems like we did most of it on the fly. I mean, the, these days, you know, we all have phones in our pocket. We can pretty much check anything. So, But it seems to me like we didn't have a set plan on what games we were going to, where we were staying necessarily, um, this I, was this was the behind the scenes stuff that I did ahead of time. <laughs> I think, yeah, uh, because I have tried to plan these trips out before, and I can tell you, it can become a logistical nightmare because if you are picking out certain teams that you want to go see, and you have to figure out when are they home, when are they not home. You know, if I want to go see these, we we saw six teams. Is that right? Six teams. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, six teams, five cities in seven days. Right. So to figure out those six teams and make sure that they're all home at the same time, especially when you have two New York teams that we wanted to go see, Right. you know, usually they tend to plan where one is in town while the other one is out of town, even when they have separate stadiums like this. So it becomes kind of a, how do we make this work from day to day? So I... I looked at the schedules and figured it out from a standpoint of, okay, if we go here and we go here, can we do, you know, do, do we go to Philadelphia first? No, we can't because Philadelphia's not going to be there or, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. So that's the tricky part. Yeah. I, you know, as you say that, I do realize, I, I remember you doing that because it would have been silly to drive to Philly and then realize their they're way yeah. <laughs> and yeah they're not coming back but i think i think what we did we is and, and this is i guess how we decided what week we were doing it mm-hmm. and uh and 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 let me tell you early august is, is a great time to take a <laughs> right. I, I swear it was I, what i remember it was hot but, yes um yeah i think i think the that determined the week that we were going to do it by the home schedules mm-hmm. but uh i think 
my recollection is, is that beyond that, and maybe you did more and, and just kind of guided me and maybe I was just, you know, kind of floating along. I just thought I knew we were going to be there when they would be there. Yeah. But like, as far as what game we hit first, um, I think there was a little bit of um, indecision about, you know, uh, going to DC and then Baltimore, or would we catch Baltimore coming back? It, right. it just seems like there was a little on the fly. Yeah. Uh, planning and we, there. And we ended up, actually taking off and heading up in that direction. I remember two tragedies happened <laughs> on that trip. Okay. One you may not remember. I remember it. And then the other one that I know that, that you remembered. Now, when I go on trips, I like to just go, 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 go. And so we have all these cities planned out and I'm thinking, Washington, here's all the stuff we could do when we go to Washington. And so the first thing that that happens for you is that I, I don't think we were more than probably an hour into Washington, D.C. And what happened? Yeah, so I, I had a very serious knee injury. Um, uh, gosh, I think when I was 24, my um, the, the official term for it is a tibial plateau fracture. Ooh. But it was actually much worse than that. It was uh, basically my knee shattered. And um, the the doctor that rebuilt it, and, and there's still a plate and pins in there to this day, put it back together, did a great job, did the best he could. But I, I remember laying in the hospital and him telling me before the surgery, um, you know, we're going to put this back together and you're going to be able to walk, hopefully. But it's like rebuilding an engine in a car. It's never quite as good mm -hmm. as it was from the factory. And then, and then the next thing he said was that probably by age 35, which at that time would have been 11, 12 years away, you're going to have to have total knee replacement. Mm. <laughs> so, and, and then you go on a trip with me where I walk endlessly and blammo. Yeah. And, and, and this, when we went on this trip, by the way, was... Uh, roughly eight, nine years past the time that the doctor told mm. me I needed a knee replacement and I still had not had a knee replacement and probably should have had one. And you were fine when we left. Yeah, but it's the, and, and that's typical, Sit, but sitting in the car yeah. in a, in a, in the same position for a long time with your knee in the same position and then starting to walk quite a bit, just not conducive for... <laughs> So it, it, it was your own brand of torture. And then I was being tortured as well. I don't know if you remember this or not, but the first hotel we stayed in, you, you were quite uh, partial to Hampton Inns. So, um, so the first hotel we stayed in was a Hampton Inn in uh, North Carolina, I think just as we were heading into Virginia. And we got into the room and then my phone rang and it was my programmer. I have a small company. It's just me and my programmer. And my programmer is telling me, um, I found another job and I'm going to be, you know, leaving in two weeks. I will give you two weeks notice. Well, I'm going on a baseball trip for a week, <laughs> right? And then I'm all of a sudden here going, oh crap, what are we going to do, right? This guy's been with me for five years. I got to find some way to replace him. So it was kind of in inauspicious beginning there for our, our baseball journey yeah you know it's funny i do remember i had forgotten about that but when you <laughs> when you brought it up i do remember that happening and i forgot about it too until i started putting the notes together for this and i was like oh crap that was the trip <laughs> when all of a sudden i found out that mm, i'm gonna be uh working solo when i get home we'll see how that all goes yeah. so um i guess to give everybody kind of a little bit of a of a background you mentioned that you are a Braves fan, but the Braves aren't your only team, right? No, that's right. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I, I have a, a, a very fond, uh, a, lot, a lot of fondness for New England. Um, mm -hmm. I just always have. Um, like I said, I've been up there many times. Um, I love it up there. And uh, because of that, I, uh, I started following the Red Sox mm -hmm. and I became a Red Sox fan way back before they won a world series in 2004. I mean, this was, you know, this was, uh, you know, we we're still always thought the, the, the curse of Babe Ruth was going to be in effect. You know, uh, we were never going to win a world series. And, 
Um, I just appreciated just the struggle. And and Boston always kind of seemed like they're always struggling against New York. You right. know, just that New York's a bigger city. It's more powerful and all that. And it just seems like the Red Sox at that time, you know, they were the they were the um, the scrappy little fighters that just couldn't win a championship. You know, always had bad luck. You know, we, we cannot, you know, don't want to bring up Bill Buckner, but you know, just <laughs> that, that kind of thing. Right. And um, so I, I became a Red Sox fan. So I, you know, and and sent, and and in those days there was no interleague play, so you never would see the Red Sox play the Braves. And it was fine having a team in the American League and the National League. You know, mm-hmm. just. You know, unless they met in the World Series, no big deal. So, so I'm going to take you back because uh, we have a long history together, and we used to be roommates. That's correct. And when we were roommates, we had a discussion one time. I'm a Detroit Tigers fan. I like the Tigers and the Phillies. Those are my two teams, American League, National League. But I asked you the question because the Detroit Tigers in 1984, I remember them winning the World Series. Mm -hmm. But most of their other years, especially through the 90s, they were horrible. I mean, they were always last place or, you know, challenging. They were getting a lot of number one draft picks, but nobody cares about that in baseball. Uh, So they really weren't winning anything. And so you were following a team that every year was almost winning but not quite winning and always finding some distressing way to lose yep so i asked you the question which would be worse for you to root for a team that has won a world series but they suck the rest of the time or that you're rooting for a team that almost always gets there (laughs) Yeah, I, I, you know what, and I don't remember what answer I gave you <laughs> because I'm, I'm thinking about that, and and honestly, you know, a lot of time has gone by since then, and and uh, I, and a few championships, and a few championships. So my perspective might have changed, but what did I? What, I'm interested. How did I answer that? <laughs> I think you casually avoided that question. Actually, I don't know that you answered that. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, because I'm thinking about it now, and I'm I don't know that I could answer it now. Yeah. It, it, it's difficult because you you know think about think about the poor Eagles fans right and you know they suffer for years and years and years and years never win a Super Bowl finally win a Super Bowl right I'm not saying that's the only Super Bowl they're gonna win but <laughs> you know is that one year of joy worth another 50 years of misery of another 50 years of misery or would you rather have them you know get to the uh championship the nfc championship game year after year and lose yeah i think you were still happy to be a boston red sox fan i was still happy to be a troy tiger fan i mean it, well yeah and part of me falling in love with that team is actually going and seeing them at fenway park and mm-hmm. it, it's i don't know if i don't know if i can kind of articulate the feeling that you that you um that you have when you're in a park like that with all that history and not just the players on the field, but actually the fans in the stadium, the whole experience, getting a Fenway Frank, you know, listening to the guys who are sitting next to you with their thick Massachusetts accents, you know, threatening to throw uh, the, 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 the first team, I, actually the first game I ever saw at Fenway was they were playing the Indians. And this was when the Indians were starting to really be good. And, uh, and there was an Indians fan in the in the stadium, and of course, you know the Boston fans were just the whole game, mm-hmm. you know, just giving this guy a load of crap. I mean, in the best possible northeastern way, <laughs> and 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 just that whole experience, you know, it you know it just kind of it just imprinted on me, you know, just a a real connection with it. Yeah, when you drive around all of New England, and you can't get away from a Boston Red Sox game on the radio to have yeah. a whole region that is so absorbed by a team. It's, uh, it's, it's an interesting experience. So, I, I, you know, I guess I could say that it almost did. I mean, of course, I wanted them to win a World Series, but it almost didn't matter. Right. You know, still really pulled for that team. Uh, because I just I just loved the whole experience. Well, you could give the t- those championship rings up to the Tigers. We we would <laughs> we wouldn't mind at all, right? Okay, so um, let's let's recount some of this trip because uh, you know it's it is baseball season coming mm-hmm. up, and some people may be thinking, hmm, that might be kind of interesting to to roll off and and take a trip. So uh, we we 
planned the whole thing out. We start on our way. Your knee goes. <laughs> I find out I'm losing an employee. We end up in Washington, D.C. The one thing that I remember, and we we uh, were passing some notes on, on uh, Messenger the other day about this. I remember us going, when we got to Washington, D.C., after we did a little sightseeing, we stopped into a restaurant to get lunch. Mm-hmm. And they were, we had tickets to a double header. It was the Nationals against the Marlins. Mm-hmm. And we knew we weren't going to survive through. I, I, I really don't care anything about the Marlins. And I just, we had this discussion yeah, too about yeah. how little we cared about the Marlins. I yeah. wanted to go see, and somehow we were going to end up watching the Marlins in a couple of games on this trip. So I'm like, I don't know that I'm really that ready to jump right over there and go see this double header. So why don't we just go towards the end of the first game? So we watched a little bit of it on TV. We were in a pub on Pennsylvania Avenue, I think. Uh, and then we just wasted enough time until we got over to the ballpark, probably in the, like the seventh inning of the first game. Yeah. I want to say, uh, it's seventh or eighth inning. It was near the end. Yeah. So once we got there, of course we're, I don't, you're not into the nationals at all either. Right. No. So this is the hard part about doing a baseball tour is that sometimes you're going to end up watching teams that you're like, ah, I really don't care. And now we're in like double header zone watching, you know, how much of this thing are we going to actually suffer through? <laughs> well, well, well uh, not only do sometimes we watch teams that we don't care about, we watch teams we hate, yeah. <laughs> which happened on this trip. <laughs> uh Oh yeah. All right. More on that later, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. So, um, so we saw the doubleheader. Your impressions of Nationals Park? You know, I, I actually I was impressed with that. I, I don't know that I was so impressed with the field. I think I was impressed with the 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 kind of layout. Um, the 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 I guess. I don't want to say courtyard, but kind of like the uh, area leading up to where you walk into the park. There was you know a couple of restaurants and. Uh, shops and then you kind of it was kind of like in a what what the actually the Atlanta Braves have right now the battery mm-hmm. um, where there's things to do as you're going up to the park I think I more enjoyed it outside the park and then once we kind of got in yeah I, I was like underwhelmed by the inside of the stadium I mean it, it was nice stadium don't get me wrong right but you know with this new era of quote unquote revivalist ballparks, you kind of look for something special. Yeah. And I didn't really see anything special inside the park to me. We were sitting right on the first base side. And I just, I felt like I was lost in a sea of seats. Yeah. It It, was, it was an odd feeling. I don't know why, but for some reason, other ballparks that I've been in, I've, I've, you know, you get a sense of where you're sitting and you feel like you're a part of the game. And we just felt like we were kind of on the outskirts. And I don't know if that was because we were watching two teams we really didn't care about. We didn't watch the end of the second game. Right. I think we got to the sixth inning and said, okay, this this was okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and it was incredibly hot. Yeah. You know, I know I said that before, but I'll say it. I mean, this was a hot trip <laughs> because I, I do remember there, there wasn't a lot of airflow. Right. And so I don't, I don't recall what the temperature was, but I, I do know that it was hot and sitting there in kind of stagnant air mm-hmm. and watching teams we didn't care about. Yeah. We, yeah. It, we, it, that, it didn't help. Yeah. I think I have something against red ballparks too, <laughs> because I went to, I went to St. Louis and at the place just annoyed me. And I, I, you know, it's so sad. I'm going to spend money to go to a, a baseball game and they were playing the Giants and I like the Giants and I'm sitting in this ballpark and you can kind of see the arch off in the distance. And I mean, it's a pleasant ballpark, but it's just so red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's not a good sign when you're annoyed with the ballpark. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we left from there, uh, next night we were in Philadelphia, but before, I mean, this is part of doing a baseball trip, I think is not only just doing the ballparks, but experiencing at least a little bit of the cities that you're going to, to visit. Yeah. And, and before, you know, what I, what I remember is we, we got up, um, in, in, uh, in the morning 
and we went to a metro station outside of DC mm-hmm. and we took that into the city and and this to me was uh, was another part uh, of the trip not only to see these games but like you said to see what the city had to offer cuz we were visiting some very historic right. and, and a significant uh, it, uh american cities and um the one thing i did want to say we spent a little time walking around uh, DC, we saw the the major, we saw the White House and the Washington Monument and all you know all the the big pieces of it. But the what really struck me, and I had been there before many times, but for some reason it was this trip really kind of kind of struck me in a different way. We went to the Smithsonian mm-hmm. or part of it, mm-hmm. uh, parts of it. I think the Air and Space Museum and the Museum of American History, I believe. Right. And I, you know what, I came away from that thinking that was free. Yeah, <laughs> you know it, it was free, and your, it's, ta- your tax dollars at work. Your tax dollars at work, but you know it, it, it's something. You know, there's a there's a couple things I think we do right. With national parks being one, and in the Smithsonian Institute, and yeah. I would encourage anybody to go there um, because it, it it's it's a it's amazing what you see. It's kind of fun what you see, and there's you know you could spend all day and not see it all, but yeah, just I just came away with that with a real appreciation of that. And then knowing what we had ahead of us as well. Right. Yeah, I I mean, the cool part about Washington, D.C., I think for anybody, whether they're American or they're coming from another country, is to know that most of the things that you can go to there are free to explore and just, I mean, enjoy the city, walk around. And the metro is a very easy way to get around. It's probably one of my favorite um, subway systems to get around on. Yeah, it's, it's it's a very good system. Yeah. So, all right. So on to Philadelphia and where was the first place that we had to go in South Philly? So I remember you taking me to Pat Steaks. Yes. Okay. And and there was, um, there was, uh, of course, those that are familiar, there's Geno's right across the street. Right. But Pat's was the place you wanted to go. Well, Geno's to me is, is too glitzy. Um, they got all the, the lights flashing and it's like, come here, come here. Don't go over to Pat's. No, I mean, they have nothing. Come over here. But the other part about that I love about Pat's is that, and, and of course I lived in Philly for a little while and all my Philly friends are going, don't tell people to go to Pat's. That's where all the tourists go. Yeah. Right. But to me, the cool thing about Pat's, b- besides the fact that he's the original king of steaks and that's uh, supposed to be where it all began, uh, whether it is or not, I don't know. Um, if you don't order properly, you're screwed. Yeah. You're going to the back of the line and there's a line. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, and, and I remember, I got to tell you, I remember walking up to order and I was incredibly stressed. <laughs> and they, and they, do, they do have signs to tell you how to order. Right. And I remember you coaching me on it, Mm -hmm. but I remember being terrified. (laughs) (laughs) And I guess I wouldn't have been as... They could have sent me to the back of the line. That's fine. But just the embarrassment. Right. Yeah. That that would have been the worst part. Get to the back (laughs) of the line. Oh, geez. I got to wait another 20 minutes for this, uh, you know, steak wit. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that uh, that was fun. So, and actually... It was the one time when I was really happy that you were driving instead of me because driving around those narrow little South Philly streets was uh, was a little tense. It was a little tense. Uh, it it I, it wasn't the most tense. Uh, we we can we'll get to that. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was tense, and I was surprised. Uh, the streets were were fairly narrow. Yeah, and that, that's the first time I've really been. To uh, I mean, I've been through Philly, but that's the first time I've really kind of spent any time in Philly. Right. So then we went down Independence Hall and kind of did a, a little walk around Center City. Saw the Liberty Bell. Yeah. I, were we getting photocopies or something? It seems like we had to go to a <laughs> Kinko's or something. So yeah, we did. So this is this is the part of the this is the part of the trip that I talk about was kind of a little um, on the fly scheduling wise. <laughs> right. Because what we had to do was uh, we we bought tickets to the game on StubHub, mm-hmm. and the only way we could get them printed was to go to a Kinko's oh. and log in and uh, to our email and print them out at the printer. I there. knew it. See, it's so funny because this is what uh, seven years ago. Yeah, and I'm sitting there thinking. 
I know there was a significant reason why we went to a Kinko's to, to get something printed, but I couldn't remember exactly what. Yeah, now you can download the ticket on your phone and then right. scan it. <laughs> yeah. But they, in those days, you actually had to have a ticket. Way back in the olden days. <laughs> way, way back in the olden days. <laughs> All right. So we ended up seeing Roy Halliday. Uh, now, is he Hall of Famer? Did he get in this year? I can't remember. I remember he was up, but I didn't. I, I don't know if they voted him in. All oh, right. No. So... Strike one for my uh, keeping up with the latest of Hall of Fame news. But uh, uh, we saw Roy Halladay. And um, my it, what's interesting is that we went to Citizens Bank. That's the current Phillies ballpark. And I had gone to Veterans Stadium many times. But this was my first time of going to Citizens Bank. And the thing I got to say is that I was so happy that you couldn't see the 30-yard line. Because <laughs> old, you know, yeah. old Veteran Stadium was just one of those that they built in the '70s. That was a multi-purpose stadium, and you could always see the football stadium in print on the baseball field, and right. it just never. Yeah. And by the way, looked a lot like Three Rivers, which looked a lot like St. Louis County, Bush which, Stadium yeah. and Cincinnati, and yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, right there already, Citizen Bank blew away what I'd seen before. But I think the other thing that I liked about it was that you could see the Philly skyline. It was a bit distant down Broad Street, but you know, I mean, it was a, it, it was a great place because we tend to sit behind home plate. Mm -hmm. And so you get that view out into the outfield and then the, the city out in the distance. Yeah, I would agree with you. That was, that was the thing that blew me away about that ballpark for sure was where we were sitting uh, you could, it was almost like, and, and clearly they, they designed it like this, but y it was almost like they, they cut out a piece of the, um, you know, normally where you'd have maybe the jumbotron or, or, uh, bleacher seats, you know, they mm -hmm. cut all that out so that when you're sitting in that, uh, section or that part of the park, you see the skyline and it fits perfectly in between mm -hmm. the seats. And it was, uh, I actually remember taking a couple pictures, yeah. um, but the, uh, the phone camera that I had at the time wasn't the best, so the the skyline barely shows up in it. But and it's not as impactful as it was there. But I do remember, I do remember that making an impression. Yeah. So that was our day in Philadelphia, and then from there, I get really fuzzy. <laughs> we headed so, to, we headed to New York, but I don't remember how we how, how we rounded how that, that out. How that worked. So so what I remember is that. When we left D.C. and headed to Philadelphia, we, we actually, when we were done at D.C., we, I think we stayed at a hotel outside of D.C. Okay. And drove up to Philly in the morning, did all our Philly stuff during the day that we did, went to the ball game that night. And then, um, you know, I, I, I want to say that uh, we obviously we obviously got into New York because the the we went to see the Yankees in New York the first game and uh, but see we must have stayed somewhere in between because we ended up I remember driving into Brooklyn and we parked the car in Brooklyn and rode up on the subway up to see the Yankee game. Yeah, see that's that's what I'm having that's what I'm I remember driving that that's the hairy part that I wanted yeah. to bring up. Driving in Brooklyn I think was far worse than driving <laughs> okay in, in, in Philly by the way. I do remember um, driving up to Brooklyn and parking in that uh, uh, parking garage that mm -hmm. you didn't know, you know, if you're going to get your car back or not. <laughs> yeah, and then we got on, then we got on the train and, and rode it into the city. But didn't we go down to? Um, we did not do anything extra in New York on that day. I don't think. I uh, think we uh, went straight up. We to, went straight to the Bronx because it was a Sunday, it was, and so it would have been a one o'clock game. That's right. And I think we went So we to did work. we did stay. When we left Philly, we did stay somewhere. I just don't remember. Yeah, where. I don't remember where either. That's hey, 7 years happens. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, we're getting old. All right. So, um Yankee Stadium is a place that you know, I wish I'd have seen the old one. Unfortunately, I I never did get a chance to. So, we went to the new Yankee Stadium and uh when you walked up to it, my first impression when I walked up to it is They've just recreated the old stadium. This is going to be incredible. And then yeah. we walked in, and I got a completely different feeling. It was kind of, I don't want to say it was 
sterile, but it was just so it was so modern that it didn't feel it's like I walked through history straight into current present day. Yeah. You know, you know what I would say and, and like you I never I never went to the old Yankee Stadium. Well, what I would say is that it's like remaking a good movie mm-hmm. and updating it, but the updated remake just sucks. Uh, yeah. Okay, so so do you remember the event that happened that I, kind of I, capped off the whole feeling about what we were thinking about? I, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> I, I do. Yeah, there there was a fellow above us that uh, lost his lunch. I had a little too much to drink, and again, it was hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll Lest use that we as forget. an excuse many times. Yes. <laughs> Lest we forget this trip. It was hot that day. And yeah, there was a uh, there was a gentleman who was um uh, imbibing a bit too much, shall we say? <laughs> and and yeah, lost his lunch and and the paramedics had to come and, and take him away and not not pleasant. That yeah, that wasn't great. So the other thing I remember is that we talk about all these great views. I mean, even you know when we'd go down to Turner Field, you could see the skyline of Atlanta when you were at Turner Field, sure. and that was a nice view from behind home plate. Yep. You go to New York, and what were we looking at? It was we were looking the, at the Bronx. <laughs> it was like the worst part of the Bronx. I'm yeah. thinking, let, turn the stadium it, around, yeah. right? What, what, point toward the city. What are we? What are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Not a not a great view. I, I mean, I, I listen. I will say, I, I I I basically said that the new Yankee Stadium sucked, and I was trying to you know make a little joke there. But the the thing about that bothers me about that is. I'm very conflicted because there's a you know a lot of history with the Yankees, although there's no history in that park. Yeah, and it's almost like when they built it, they tried to transfer that history over, but it's it's not the same field, right? Um, and uh, so you're you're like you you want to get into the history of it, you know, especially if you're a baseball fan, and even if you just don't like the Yankees, right? Uh, like somebody you, in this room, you being a Boston Red Sox fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to appreciate. I mean, what the Yankees, you know, just the history of the game and what, what they've done, how many championships they've won, the players that have played on that team, right? you know, uh, you can't ignore that. And but, so having that feeling and then, you know, I guess, I don't know, I, I would have felt differently about it, I think, if it were the original Yankee Stadium. Yeah. I think that was part of my disappointment was that me being such a, a lover of the history of baseball... It just was such a letdown. I mm-hmm. don't know that it's that bad of a stadium. I mean, I'm sure it's a fine stadium, but for some reason, I walked in there with an expectation that it just could not meet. Yeah, I, I think I was about ready to say, I, you and I are both enough baseball fans that we can appreciate we're going to Yankee Stadium, you know, and so the the, the, the bar is set high. Right. And when it doesn't meet it, yeah, you know. It's, it's, it's rough. So we left there, and you reminded me that we stayed somewhere in Connecticut, I guess, that, that particular evening. Yeah, that was one of those things where, you know, and we did this a lot on this trip. We just, we kind of left and we kind of drove till we just felt like, you know, we got to get some sleep. Right. And I think we, you know, and uh, again, in this age that we live in, uh, while we're driving down the road, I'm driving and you're in the passenger seat online booking us a room, <laughs> find, with finding a, us the hotel, with reading a, the reviews. With an app that isn't really working for me. <laughs> oh, I had the worst. I was using the uh, Hotels.com app, and I, I've never loaded that back on my phone. I still use that website, but I do not use their app because I just had such a bad yeah, experience. I, I remember that as well. <laughs> I was ripping my hair out. <laughs> that was seven years ago. I, I, I'm hoping they have a better app by now. Um so we ended up in Boston, which for you and, and me, I mean, I have a lot of history with Fenway Park myself. I've been there many times. I remember going there with my dad. It was the first introduction to bizarre behavior that I can remember. We had gone to see back when ABC used to have Monday Night Baseball and Al Michaels and Bob Uecker were doing and Howard Cosell were doing Monday Night Baseball. Uh, we were watching the Red Sox and the Tigers and we were sitting right behind home plate and the guy in front of us was smoking a cigar, which you wouldn't really see that happen yeah. anymore. You and, get tossed right out today. And, oh, man. And then we're walking away from the stadium after the game's over, and apparently a disgruntled fan was mumbling and yelling to himself as he went walking solo right by me and my dad. And I'm like, 
is this what baseball does to people? I am not quite sure. <laughs> so, um, but I've been to I've been to Fenway many many times, and we ended up spending two days in Boston because we wanted to check out some stuff in Boston as well. Mm-hmm. I want I want to bring back to your recollection. Do you remember the bizarre situation we had with the Batman movie? There was something very, there was something very odd about the place we went to go see that Batman movie. It was the yeah, there were guards. It wasn't just the guards. It was a furniture store. Oh, that's right. Do you that's remember right. that? That's right. That's right. We walked. <laughs> it was so. I yeah, I remember now. We walked forever <laughs> right. through a furniture store to get to the movie theater, was, and that was the only way to get in. It was an IMAX theater, but we're like. Why do we have to walk through an entire showroom of a furniture store through the zigzag whatever to just to get to see the movie? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was uh, that was Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Yeah. The Dark Knight Rises we we saw together in Boston, and that it was um, you know a tragedy had happened at that movie. <laughs> so there were guards. I remember that too. And and uh, I, I I that's the only time I think I've ever seen guards yeah at, at the doors you know going to see a movie it was very strange but uh, the movie theater was packed yeah but yeah that was that was weird i, I had forgotten about that yeah too, but. so the, the, then that was in uh Wo- woburn massachusetts which we got to know that town very well we did because your knee was flaring up i think pretty bad at that time yeah and and this is one i still feel bad about this it, you know even though i you know i couldn't have controlled it but i f- i felt bad we we missed a day basically uh because i had to rest yeah. uh, i had to rest my knee um but yeah i think that's when we ended up going to see that movie right and i and and we sat in the hotel all day watching hotel impossible you remember that yeah i do remember that because <laughs> i'd never seen the show before and i remember watching like the first two episodes and thinking okay what is this and then you know it was basically part of my life i think by the time yeah. we left there because <laughs> i would watch the entire marathon yeah um but that was good. I mean, we uh, we did get some time in Boston and and had some time. To well, walk we went around. to the Bull and Finch. Yeah, um, and, and of course that that's what you have to do. That I, I've got actually that's my Facebook profile picture is the picture you took of me standing outside Cheers, standing outside of Cheers, the real Cheers, the, not the fake Cheers that's on Boston or is at uh, Faneuil, Faneuil Hall. Hall. Yeah, yeah, and then when you go inside. Uh, it's it's a little bit disappointing, no? It's different. It's definitely not what you would expect it to be. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a hole in the wall. Well, the funny thing is, is the first time I ever went there, and I, I went there probably, I want to say 91, 92 was the first time I ever went there. And what struck me, obviously, it's it's much different than, than what they depict on the TV show inside. But once you go inside and you see how the building is positioned and how you walk down the stairs to get in, of course it's not going to look like what they had right. on TV. There's no way. Yeah, it's not physically possible. So, um, but uh, I was surprised at how small it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I walked in there, and I'm like, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas the one that they had at uh, Faneuil Hall, they tried to sort of mimic what the right. interior looked like, but it wasn't the original place. Right. So still a great place to go get a beer, though. I mean, yeah. because you're sitting there with the locals. And I remember having a conversation with one guy in there at, at one time. And he said, oh, yeah, I remember when the show was on. And we used to always kind of poke fun at it and, you know, <laughs> that, that sort of thing. But um, so let's talk about the ball game, because I'm trying to remember. They were playing the Texas Rangers. I do remember that, because Josh Hamilton, I think, was making his comeback, and he was playing with them at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were it was either a nine to eight game or a six to three game. Which one? Which one was it? Uh, you know what? I remember nine to eight, but I'll tell you something. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Why I'm a little unclear about that, and and this is this is this is one of those this is one of those times in our friendship I think where I I, I get stubborn, but then I learn something from it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I I had been to Fenway I don't I don't know half a dozen times or so and and uh, I'd never sat in the bleachers mm-hmm. and I wanted to sit in the bleachers so I got us tickets to that game in the bleachers right. now normally like you said we sit behind home plate which is a which is you know the best place to sit let's be honest um, but for some reason I had it in my head I wanted to sit in the bleachers and I remember you saying to me 
ah, I don't know if that's a good idea. You're just so disconnected from the game. It's hard to follow the game. You can't. I was like, oh, come on. Hey, no <laughs> stop your whining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> stop your whining. So we get out there and what happens? Can't follow the game. Right. <laughs> it's very disconnected. We're paying more attention to what's going on with the people sitting in the in the row in front of us right. than we ever paid to that game. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I, I, I remember 9 to 8, but I, I, I'm not. I think it was nine to eight because I remember it was kind of a back and forth game, and then it was a really high score. Yeah. So that I, I, for me, I'm glad we sat out there because I've been to Fenway Park a million times, and I've never sat in the bleachers. Well, that was that was my thinking. You yeah, know? so it was good for me. It, I I survived. Well, well, that's good. We just, just couldn't really, and, and not to say we couldn't, you know, we, we followed the game. It was just, it was hard. It was like sometimes you had to play catch up because it was easily to get, easy to get distracted. Yeah. So Boston was great. Enjoyed that. And then the next place on our list was to go back to New York. And this was our chance to actually do some going around downtown and we were staying in Queens. You were a little nervous about our hotel, though, <laughs> as, I, as I recall. This was my booking. Every, but everything else, we were Hampton in, Hampton in, Hampton in. Or, well, of course, we stayed in the Hilton in, in Woburn, which is uh, w- which we got. Uh, we had to switch rooms the first night because the air conditioner wasn't working or something. Yeah, the air conditioning wasn't working, and it was again, it was hot. Right, you know, <laughs> it's August. So, yeah, it was it was miserable uh, in that hotel room. Very stuffy. We complained about it. They moved us. Uh, apparently, the air conditioning wasn't working on the whole floor or something. Right. Anyway, they ended up moving us to a different room, and uh, they uh, actually gave us access to the super secret breakfast room. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. So if you're a Hilton honors member and you reach diamond club status, you get access. If you stay to Hilton, you get access to the super secret breakfast room that no one knows about. Right. No, the rest of the hotel doesn't know (laughs) this is going on, but there's some like awesome buffet going on in the Hilton that you don't know about unless you're a diamond (laughs) member, but they gave us access to that because the air conditioning was broken. That was the only good thing. I do remember that. I do. Although I don't know that I, I think about what I ate up there as I just remember it was a really big room with a buffet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't tell you what I ate either, but it, it was breakfast, it was buffet, it was free. And I'm, by the you know. way, everybody, we enjoyed this trip. <laughs> so so if it sounds like we're whining and complaining a bit, no, we actually really well, enjoyed well, this trip. We did, and I think I think that part of the enjoyment of the memory is, you know, bringing up the funny details and the tragedies. Right. Because you know, it, it, sometimes that's what makes a trip is the tragedy, right? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and you just uh, kind of put it in perspective and... You know, hey, it was an adventure. Right. So here we are. We're in Queens now, and Drew's picked out the hotel, and Pete's going, uh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you you and I talked... Actually, we talked about this earlier. I, I, I'm. It's not that I'm snobbish about what hotels I'll stay in, but I am in one regard, and I have to feel like the hotel's clean mm-hmm. beyond anything else. I mean, it can be... It can be a rundown, ramshackle room as long as I know that it's clean. Mm-hmm. And when I walk into some hotels, I don't feel like it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you know me, I'm not. Would you say I'm an OCD type no, person? Yeah. No. So this is just one thing, one hang up I have. And what's funny, I I guess kind of what made it worse was. You'd mentioned we were watching that marathon on uh, Hotel Impossible, and one of the things that <laughs> yeah, that one of the things that the guy was doing was he was taking this uh, test equipment into the bathrooms of the room and testing for bacteria. And as we walked into our room, that's exactly what they were doing. <laughs> oh, so crap. it didn't inspire a lot of confidence, right? Yeah. So. Um... I also remember that we had to like go down to a convenience store or something to get to to eat. Yeah. So what we ended up doing, we were in Queens, and um, so the, there's there's their markets basically. I guess there's not really a convenience store in the neighborhood we were in. It was right. just a market. We found one that was. I don't know, what was it, about six blocks away or right. something like that? Yeah. Uh, right down to Queens Boulevard. We walked down there. And uh, got supplies for the night so we could, you know, kind of have a uh, do-it-yourself nosh <laughs> in the right. hotel room. Uh, yeah, just just a local market. And I do remember that there was some guy, um, 
sitting out on the sidewalk, probably probably 50, looked like he was 70, wasn't wearing a shirt, <laughs> every bit of 300 pounds. Right. And I just remember thinking, does this man have no shame? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're and where Queens. has Drew taken us to? <laughs> you're in Queens, New York, for goodness sake. How right. many, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't see Kevin James once. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't see him either. All right. So then we uh, we hopped on the uh, on the subway or the L, I guess, in this particular case, because it was above ground. And we rode into New York. And I put you through another brand of torture of trying to walk from one end of Manhattan to the other, because we started at Grand Central. Well, you know, it was actually me. This is this was my doing, because uh, we wanted to go to McSorley's, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I, I know McSorley's is down by NYU. It's down by uh, Washington Square Park. Greenwich, Greenwich Village area, In I the guess. Greenwich yeah, Village yeah. area, yeah. And um, I didn't know how far away it was from where we were, but I just, just pulled out the phone, looked it up on the map, and I was like, oh, we can walk this. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it, like 60-some blocks? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't a wise move. But we got there. We did. We got there. And uh, they give you, what, five, six beers? Yeah, so when they're busy, you have to, um, and, 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 you know, I, 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 listen, at, at the time it was the case. It may be different now, but if you walked in there and ordered one beer, they'd throw you out. You know, they just basically <laughs> say, we don't have time for this, you right. know? And they make their own beer. You, you order a light or a dark, and they bring you four. Four, okay. And you can order, you know, eight. You can order 16. And, right. And I think they're, they're small mugs. They're like uh, eight yeah. ounces. Yeah. Um, so you need four. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But we sat in there for a little bit and drank some beer. Yeah. Walked, walked around. Uh, but do you remember what happened at McSorley's when we tried to leave? I don't. So this is something I can remind you about. Okay. Um, and every time I go to McSorley's, I forget this very thing. <laughs> they only take cash. Ah. And who carries cash? Right. We didn't have any cash. Yeah, I've learned since, but uh, yeah. back then, yeah. And so we had we had been sitting there for probably two hours, maybe. Yeah. Drinking beers, ordering four at a time, eight at a time. And I can't remember what the tab was, but, and we had a little bit of cash on us, but I think we only had like 10 or 15 bucks, but it wasn't nearly enough to cover the tab. <laughs> this is how great the people at McSorley's are. They said, don't worry about it. Next time you're in, remember us. And they let us go. Where else would you have gotten I'm, that kind of attitude? I am glad you reminded me of that because next time I go to New York, I will make sure to go in there <laughs> and give them some extra money for what I didn't pay the first time. Well, I, I have done so too. Since, have you? So, yeah, okay, but, but right. don't but don't let that stop you. No, no, I, no. Again, I don't remember how much we uh, we <laughs> how much beer uh. we ended up. I felt like the Blues Brothers in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you boys drank, you know, two hundred dollars, or we would pay you a hundred dollars, but you drank two hundred dollars worth of beer. <laughs> right. I was just in awe looking around at this bar that was built before the Civil War and right. seeing the stuff that was etched into the walls. Where you know, yeah. I mean. Talk about history. Yeah. It, the oldest continuously operated pub in the United States. Yeah. I believe. Or maybe North America. And so if you're going to do a baseball tour, you know, head into town and do some other stuff too. I right. Mean, that Absolutely. Was, that was definitely cool. And that was my first time seeing Grand Central too. So that, Mine too. That, that was cool. We went by uh, Wall Street. We went down to the Freedom Tower while they were still building that. Right. I, I actually have a picture of that while it was still under construction, and, and the, um, they had not quite opened the 9-11 memorial, but I think they had people going through uh, kind of like a preview right. tour, maybe. Yeah. And I think I remember us discussing doing it, and we decided against it. Yeah. Not much time. Yeah. We, we were really pressed on time. So the next day, we went to the Mets game in Queens at City Field. <laughs> yes. Um. There's a couple things I remember about City Field. City Field was the first ballpark that we sat in behind home plate where I was looking out at the rest of the stadium, uh, just kind of oblivious to the game. We were in the upper decks. Correct. And so I think I was oblivious to the game because as a Phillies fan, I can't stand the Mets. And as a Braves fan, I can't stand them either. And then they were playing the Marlins again. <laughs> Why are we chasing the Marlins? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. So 
The only thing that I remember about that game, I don't remember anything about the game being played itself. Right. I do remember that I was impressed with City Field, that I thought it was a nicer ballpark than Yankee Stadium was. I, I agree with you, yeah. What, what a surprise that was. But the other thing that always sticks in my mind is that there was something on the scoreboard that was misspelled. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to remember yeah. this because I was going to bring it up if you had. And I and so I decided I was so bored with the game that I decided <laughs> to tweet to the Mets that they had a misspelling on their on their scoreboard and they never fixed it. They never fixed it. It, it was bad. I'm, now we only stayed there for two hours. Yeah. And uh, I mean the game was probably two and a half to three hours. But I remember turning around and looking at you and going. You know, we were going to go see Baltimore play tomorrow night. You right. want to just go now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a, another uh, last minute change, but I, I remember that as well. We left the Mets game early so that we could get in the car to make it to Baltimore to see the evening game the same day. Yes. And we did. And we did. The amazing thing was somehow we traversed the entire New Jersey Turnpike <laughs> with absolutely nothing slowing us down. Right. Including boredom. Uh, and to get there. And, uh, so we, I remember we got back in the car and we just drove and I don't know, I mean, we may have stopped for something to eat, but we had to stop for gas Yeah, because we, the, the one thing about going through New Jersey is you can't pump your own gas. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. Right. They have to pump it for you. So when you're on the turnpike, they have these, um, what do they call them? They're, 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 uh, like refresh station or something like that. There's something like, I can't remember, but you, you pull off and it's just, it's a travel plaza basically, you know, there's like two or three or four different fast food restaurants in there. There's gas, a convenience store, restrooms. Uh, so we stopped at, I think the, f the first one that was convenient outside the city to fill up with gas. I think we bought some road food, right? Went to the restroom and then it was straight into Baltimore. Yeah. And we made it. We did. We which got, I didn't know that we were going to do. And we got there. It was the game had just started, but we walked in. They were playing the Royals. And this is interesting for me because I've been to Camden Yards before, but I went to Camden Yards in 1993, 94, maybe. Mm -hmm. And my impression of Camden Yards was, eh. You know, I I get it. I like the outfield and I like the warehouse out there, but um, the rest of the ballpark, I was sitting it. I was sitting way over on the first base side, uh, on, in the outfield area, and I was looking back at home plate, and it just looked like a round stadium on that side, and I wasn't getting a lot of view from the other side. So I was like. Eh, I mean, this is nice, but I don't understand why everybody's going all crazy about it because they were already building other ballparks that I thought were outclassing what Camden Yards was. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting was when we walked in this time, I know they had done a remodel at some point or another, but whatever they did, I love that ballpark. <laughs> I mean, it, it when I, after going in there and looking at it and, and seeing it the second time, I just got a completely different impression of of Camden Yards. What was your what was your first impression? My, I, I was blown away by it, honestly. Yeah. Um. I gotta say because uh, that was the first time I'd been there, and and in fact, uh, other than Fenway, this this trip, this was the first time I'd been to any of these parks. Mm -hmm. Um. So it was a it was a really neat experience for me to to have that. But um, uh, you know, Camden, I remember. It was one of the first, you know, like like we were talking about earlier, your your typical ballparks in those days were those round multi-purpose stadiums that, you know, every city had. And then they built Camden Yard, which was something different, kind of a throwback, you know, um, kind of, I guess, started was was or at least was part of the start of the whole revival baseball stadium revivalist movement. And at the time we went to see it. It was fairly old. I mean, they, Fulton County Stadium was like 30 years old, I think, when they demolished it. Yeah. And when we went to Camden Yards, it was, what, almost 20 years yeah. old? Yeah. So, it you know, it was an old park. Yeah. But it looked great. Yeah. You yeah, know? they really did a number on that that park when they did the remodel. What, what I liked about it were the concourses were big. Mm-hmm. 
And I like the view of the warehouse, you know, when you get up in, in the field and just the feel of the park itself, you know, it was, um, it was very reminiscent of, of all the, we've all seen them, these black and white photos of ball games from, you know, back in the golden age of baseball. It was very, to me, it was very reminiscent of that. Mm -hmm. And I loved the park actually. Yeah. So do you remember who the player was? That made his. Now, this is funny because we had decided we were going to go see the next game, the next day's game. But because we had made this change of plans, we ended up seeing this player have his first major league game. Who was that player? Yeah, you know, and I knew you were going to ask me this, and I was <laughs> racking my brain, and I can't come up with it. You don't know? I can't come up with I'll it. I'll give you a big hint. He just signed a $30 million contract or three, uh, $300 million contract. Why am I drawing a blank? M Manny Machado. That's right. I don't know why. I was thinking, I don't know why I was thinking of someone else. I, I, what happens to me is my wires get crossed. I, I'm convinced that it's somebody else, right. but I know it's not that person. And then when that happens to me, yep. I just cannot come up with the right answer. <laughs> so it was Manny Machado's That's right. first game, and his second at bat, he hit a triple. That's right. And then the next at bat, he comes up and he hit a single. And you and I were going... The dude's going to hit the cycle. <laughs> yes, because he got the hardest, the triple, right? Right, you know, right. I, didn't he end up getting, he ended up getting all of them except. No, he didn't, didn't hit a home run. He hit a home run the next night, but he didn't. But he got a, uh, but he got a single, double, and triple. He, he went two for four. Oh. So we, we had, because that's I fun. thought he got closer too. I thought he had hit a home run in that game, but that's just my imagination saying, Oh yeah, we talked about a cycle. He must have been closer than he was. So the the, the, well, the box... fact that the fact that he had a triple and a single, I mean, yeah, in his first game, yeah, that's that's like that's like a no hitter into the seventh inning you, or sixth inning. You start talking about it seriously, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun to to get a chance to see that. So, um, all right. So after that, we pretty much headed home, um, but we'd seen a lot during that uh, during that trip. We had, and um, you know that I, I got to say that the longest leg of that trip was the trip home. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we went down. If I remember correctly, I think we went down eighty one through Virginia, right, the Shenandoah Valley. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And while that's a very beautiful drive, it's it, very redundant. It's a long drive. <laughs> yeah. It is a long drive. Well, thanks for the. Uh, stroll down memory lane and now we have actually a recording to that we'll never forget this stuff now that's right <laughs> we've got it documented yeah absolutely well thanks for having me this was fun it was uh i i gotta tell you you know there were a lot of things i'd forgotten about but you know that was uh that was a really great trip i'm glad we did it um you know, I, I, sometimes I get in the mode of where I really want to do something, but something keeps me, you know, I'm a little bit hesitant, you know, mm -hmm. you know maybe that seems like a bit much effort, you know, or I don't know, but, uh, I'm glad we just made the decision and we just did it. So when are we doing this again? <laughs> well, uh, you know, um, I, I've been, for some reason, it's funny. I've been thinking that a West coast, mm. uh, ballpark trip would be the thing to do. I, I actually have been thinking about that for a few months. Well, it would clear off a lot of the rest of my list because <laughs> the only ballparks I haven't been to that aren't West are the two in Florida, which I can get to pretty easily, uh, Houston, and then everything else is on the West Coast. So SunTrust. We'll, we'll have to do that. And yeah. SunTrust. Well, but it's so sad. This is the hard part about do it, trying to count up your ballparks is they keep building new ones. Yeah. And then I, I check one off the list and now you got to go back. I know. I've been to Turner. I bet. What does Atlanta want? They just want my money. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, I, again, I, I thought the, the Ted was a perfectly good ballpark. I, you know, I, I don't know all the nuances about it. I don't know. Um, you know, I've, I living in Atlanta, you know, you see, a lot of different opinion written about it, you know, and I, I even saw some graphic in a newspaper that showed they colored parts of the town red where season ticket holders live. Mm -hmm. And it was a clear majority. They all lived on the north side of town. Mm. Um, and when I say the north side of town, I mean, I'm talking way above the perimeter, you know, not the north side of downtown. Right. So uh, the 
Turner Stadium was south of downtown, mm-hmm. and their claim was it's too difficult to get there. I never found it difficult <laughs> to get there. There was a Marta stop there. Um, you know, it, it was it, near the crossroads of two major highways, uh, Interstate 20 and uh, 75, 85 connector. And um, parking was great. Uh, I just don't get why they thought they needed a new stadium. Now, having said that, the new stadium's awesome. Right. Other than the parking, the stadium is awesome. And it's in Smyrna. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to work that one out. So that, that'll that knock me down to eight, and then we'll go West Coast. <laughs> well, the the thing that would be good about a West Coast trip is is that, you know, when we did the Northeast, we it wasn't just about baseball. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to see a lot of history, a lot of U.S. history, which we're both fans of. Right. We both like the show um, Turn. Yes. You were a fan Love of that show. Love that show. Yeah. Love that show. So uh, there would be a lot more to do, I think, and see on the West Coast. Uh, and, you know, how awesome of a trip would it be to, say, fly into San Diego, mm-hmm. rent a car. See Manny Machado again. See, see Manny Machado again and drive up the coast to Seattle Yeah, and fly back. I yeah. mean, how awesome would that yeah, be? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've done it in small spurts, but uh, that's, a, that's an awesome drive to do that. We need a month. <laughs> yeah well yeah. uh i'd like to work that out sure yeah we'll see we'll we could see. throw arizona and colorado in there too uh, you right. know i'm I'm not been to either one of those stay days. tuned <laughs> <laughs> very good all well, right thank, thank you, you much yeah thank you and there closes out another week of travel fuels life head to the show notes page at travelfuelslife.com slash podcasts search for episode number 15 and there you'll find a video with me and Pete counting down our individual lists of our top five favorite Major League Baseball parks. So if you're planning a trip, or like me, you just can't get enough baseball, head on out there and check that out. And if you enjoyed today's show, make sure you subscribe using your favorite podcast app, and that way you won't miss any episodes coming up. And jump on twitter.com slash travel fuels life ask me any questions you like about my favorite ballparks and then tell me the ones that you love the best I look forward to hearing from you and would love to know and until next time have a great week safe travels and thanks for listening to travel fuels life